Hi, so I'm sitting here with two experts on uh, sexuality, intimacy, um, love life, relationships and um, I'm going to ask you guys some questions about this in a moment. This is Matthias Schwentek and this is um, Robin Dalton. Uh, they both work at, as coaches and uh, seminar uh, leaders. <laughs> say. Uh, so maybe you could first start by telling a bit about yourself, what you're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hi. Um, yeah. My name is Matthias. Matthias Wentek. I'm originally from Germany. I have to see where the camera is up there. Right? Yes. Uh, I'm from mm -hmm. Germany. I'm in uh, tantra, sacred sexuality, sexual shamanism, uh, into the nervous system, the wheel of consent. I'm into neurophysiology, uh, neurobiology, and I'm just interested in so many different topics. I'm a sexual body worker and educator for individuals, for couples. I do uh, introductions from two hours, I do 50 people uh, events, I do one week <laughs> workshops, I just do the entire <laughs> board brand educating people in sexuality. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to be much briefer. Right. Okay. <laughs> That's good. okay, so to you, Rowan. <laughs> Um, yeah, I came into this world of conscious sexuality after a 15-year career in the environmental sector doing leadership development mm -hmm. and came to a place of finding what, a, what about the body? What about our sensuality and sexuality and this expression of who we are in the world? And so I, I shifted paths a few years ago um, and now work as a, a leadership and empowerment coach, particularly around sensuality, sexuality, intimacy, related, <coughs> um, and, and I'm passionate about the wheel of consent and weave that into everything that I do, from one-on-one -on -one sessions to workshops, retreats, um, and the, the work that we do together with couples. And, yeah. yeah, great, thank you. Yeah. So maybe let's start with the wheel of consent. So could one of you maybe explain to people who have never heard of it um, what it entails? Would you like to start? Mm, sure. Yeah. Take a stab at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the Wheel of Consent was created by Betty Martin. Mm -hmm. And it's based on two questions related to touch is how it was developed initially. Mm -hmm. The two questions are, how do you want to touch me? And how do you want me to touch mm -hmm. you? And from those two questions, there are actually four different ways of relating that emerge when you start playing with that with another person. Yeah. And so the wheel is about understanding these different dynamics related to giving and receiving, mm -hmm. as well as who's doing the action and who is it for, mm -hmm. because those two things are different. Mm -hmm. And for many of us, giving is synonymous with doing. Yeah. And receiving is synonymous with being done too. Like when you give a massage. Yes. You yes. serve someone, you do it someone, for the other person. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. I receive the massage and I... Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And someone does something to me. Yeah. And then the wheel of consent adds these two other yeah, dimensions, right? So yeah, there's right? another dimension Saying to it. I can also touch you because I like it, for Yes. Example. Yes. So you can receive by doing something for yourself. Yeah by touching me. I can give by giving you access to my body where you can feel me for yeah. your own pleasure. Mm -hmm. And now I already made a mistake because I didn't actually ask, didn't you, ask. ask you for consent. <laughs> so I'm sorry. So maybe you can go into this. So this was totally not in line with the philosophy <laughs> because what would happen first? Yeah. So it's, an, it's a really interesting topic about consent and the nervous system specifically related to touch and trauma. So the first thing what we differentiate is that in the dynamic of taking, so where we go into an action for our self, that we have to activate our skin first so that we're actually capable of feeling and knowing where does the information and pleasure and touch starts to go inside of our body where we do it for ourselves. So the intention is touching and feeling for ourselves, and being capable of using our body as a source of pleasure while we're touching somebody else. Mm -hmm. The important piece is when we're doing that and we don't have a verbal consent or an agreement with the person that we want to touch, their nervous system, their skin, their nose <laughs> in an instant 
when they're getting touched, that they're getting touched. Yeah. And when somebody is getting touched against their will, your nervous system will, will detect that immediately. And your nervous system, there's a part in our nervous system that calls neuroception that is checking our environment constantly for threats, is checking in, well, actually, I haven't been asked for being touched here. And I actually don't like that being touched against my will. Because we all have in our nervous system an early childhood imprint that we have been touched against our will before we could speak and we have learned to go along with touch or with a doing that was more important than how we feel about that. So the wheel of consent is breaking that apart and allows us to find that touching for ourselves is an option as long we have consent. And this is so liberating. Mm -hmm. for so many people mm -hmm. it's like wow i can actually do something for myself yeah. for my own pleasure yeah i can touch you and it yeah. doesn't have to be about you yeah it can be about me yeah and it's like a whole world opens up yeah. with that possibility and it's, it's even relaxing for the person who is allowing right in mm -hmm. a way because you just kind of allow the other person to enjoy yeah, yeah this is yeah, this is something really interesting because this is the most delicious touch actually yeah. when somebody can feel themselves mm -hmm. and there isn't given consent that nearly every person I know is really enjoying this way of touch and this is really exquisite and and there's a there's a quality of of surrender in there mm -hmm. as long as it is in alignment with the dynamic that is going to happen. Yeah, very mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. So in your experience, does this also help couples to find more happiness in their in their sex life or in their physical mm -hmm. intimacy? Mm -hmm. Does it improve relationship mm -hmm. uh, satisfaction, <laughs> happiness? Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. So so how most relationships are wired is that people feeling responsible for their partner's pleasure. Mm -hmm. And in many many relationships, there are dynamics given that they do something for the other person to make them feel good yeah. and they're constantly doing something related to touch yeah. and action to give the other person a good experience and having pleasure on their pleasure mm -hmm. yeah. what this is doing with the nervous system in long term is people getting completely turned off and really thinking well the other person is constantly doing this stuff to me and they're assuming that they're doing that for themselves mm -hmm. and at the end nobody is really receiving anything yeah mm -hmm. that's too bad huh yeah. mm -hmm. well that does it yeah. ring a bell yeah <laughs> sounds yeah. like yes yeah, yeah. yeah. and we're, we're all so used to giving mm -hmm. we live in a, a society in a framework mm -hmm. where we're taught from a very young age mm -hmm. that that we should put others first, yeah. that our needs and desires don't matter, yeah. that we aren't worthy mm -hmm. of having or wanting or desiring, mm -hmm. um, that it's wrong, it's bad, it's shameful. All of these messages yeah. have pushed us all over to this side mm -hmm. of it's if we want to touch and connect, the way to do that is to give something. Yeah. And so what is so beautiful about the wheel is that it's it's at its core, it's about teaching people how to receive. <coughs> okay. And the two different ways that we can receive. Yeah. We can either do for ourselves or we can ask someone to do something for us. Mm -hmm. And so it's reactivating that that language center to be able to find what it is we want, to be able to yeah. actually value that, wow, what I want matters. Yeah. And then to find the ability, the language to to make a request and say, Hey, can I can mm -hmm. I feel you up for five minutes, <laughs> or can you yeah. can you give me a massage, and mm -hmm. and then from there to be able to receive the nourishment mm -hmm. of that touch of that connection, mm -hmm. whether that's with an intimate partner, whether that's with a friend, whether that's with um, you know there there con yeah and Trouble and you can apply this <laughs> beyond right. touch and and intimate relating. Um, in the ways yeah. that we engage in the world yeah. of getting really clear about what it is we want yeah. and creating those agreements mm -hmm. so that we're actually getting mm -hmm. what we, we requested. Yeah. I think it's very powerful. I think many people have trouble expressing what they what they like. Yeah. I, I told you before when I participated in a workshop myself that was uh, using this, mm -hmm. I had really this revelation like this, like, oh my God, I can't, like I'm allowed to ask for what I want. And yeah. it was 
not easy to connect to what that actually was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and there are some studies showing that especially women, they might measure their sexual satisfaction by how satisfied their partner is. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. which is on the one hand nice, on the other hand, it's a little yeah. sad because yeah. Um, yeah. there's so much more to explore. Yeah, yeah. yeah by, by, by saying to that is that women measure their own satisfaction on how satisfied their partner is. Mm -hmm. And uh, by most men, they're having this, this, this counting of uh, how many orgasms can I give to my partner? Yeah, um, I have yes. to perform well yeah. and make I have my to partner feel good. Well. And 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 the, the wheel has this this beautiful way of breaking this into in, into pieces, breaking it apart and open. That specifically for women, that taking is becoming an option, so that women not longer mm -hmm. responsible for man's right action. So yeah. that they don't have to wait that the that their man making the right steps to learn what is the right dynamic. That women can literally becoming master in receiving by doing. Mm -hmm. And this is a very sensual mm -hmm. dynamic. This is what I just showed in the beginning, you know, when we can when we find that in our skin, when we find that in our hands, that we can reach out and touch and feel. Feel for our own pleasure mm -hmm. and when specifically women finding this dynamic within their own skin that they are self-responsible for their own turn and for their own feeling for their own pleasure then they are not longer dependent on men doing the right things because mm -hmm. then they are on the on the roots on the core of their own desire mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Essentially That's and right. sexually. Yeah. Does it, is it difficult for some people, maybe even particularly men, I would think, to touch for their own, or maybe women as well? But yes. I was thinking because men might yeah. be very scared of, like, they don't want to abuse someone. It's also a fear that men may have. Yes. And so if the man touches the woman just to please himself, maybe he will also feel guilty mm -hmm. or about that or something. And women as well, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that in yeah, your experience? Yeah, I think, I think it's challenging for everyone. Yeah. And for different reasons. Yes. And that can be based on gender. It can be based on how we were raised, um, religious reasons. I mean, there are all kinds of reasons. Yeah. But it's across the board. It's, it's, it's difficult for pretty much everyone. Yeah. to be able to access taking. Mm -hmm. And taking is also the cornerstone that opens up all of the other dynamics of the wheel. Mm -hmm. It's when we learn to feel for ourselves and to open up that pleasure pathway mm -hmm. from our skin into our brain mm -hmm. that we then start to discover what it is we like. Yeah. And when we know what we like, then we know what we can ask for. Yeah. And when we know how to fill ourselves up, we become better at serving others. Mm -hmm. And so you can see how how that each piece builds on mm -hmm. being able to be fluent yeah. in all four of these ways of relating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very beautiful. And you also told me before about how you apply it to relationships in general, so not just in the sexual or touching domain. So yeah. yeah, so so the wheel of consent in its original form is uh, got developed from uh, Harry Fettis three-minute game of what do you want to do to me for three minutes and mm -hmm. what do you want me to do to you for three minutes and that's a very broad approach that you can apply everywhere in your life yeah right so the wheel itself um, uh, let's say it that way is opening up the dynamic in or through touch into the body and into the nervous system to give an embodied experience of it and in the moment when this is a felt sense uh, the wheel itself opens up in all different areas in life how to apply that how to communicate that what we want somebody else is doing for us or what do we want from somebody else and we 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 we're finding in our own language um, more and more gaps where we can fill up um, the areas of unknown how to apply it and how to request and how to make an offering and how mm -hmm. to communicate that and that makes mm -hmm. life so much richer it's, and how to say no also yeah. and accept no. a no yeah. by yeah. another person right yeah yeah, yeah. Which can be also tough yeah. yeah okay great thank you so much for this part um, mm -hmm. i would like to go a little bit in the direction of tantra now yeah. because when we talk about how can we make uh, sex life more fulfilling uh, a lot of people hear about tantra and it might be a solution to that might make your 
sex life more interesting and of course in, in reality tantra it's even deeper like it's not just to make it more interesting it's actually about spirituality and mm. and um, this kind of deep like deep connection with a partner as i understand it so um maybe mm. what what would you say what's the difference between tantric sex or lovemaking and non-tantric mm. so I would like to start. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> and I would like to start because this is one of the Osho quotes uh, who brought the ways of Tantra or Neo-Tantra more into the Western world. And he said clearly, Tantra is something that should be taught by women, mm -hmm. through women. <laughs> so it's ironic. That it's you totally ironic. <laughs> totally I'm going to start. <laughs> Matt's actually a woman. <laughs> okay, <nothing. Yeah. laughs> so, so um, I, I have a quote from another friend who said, just, Tantra is not about sex, but if sex not included, then it's not about Tantra. Then it's not Tantra. Then it's not Tantra. And, yeah. um, and I have to say that most of my teachers in the lineage over the last 20 years were mostly men. So that was just, of course, also teaching and very long and Montag Chia and David Data and uh, all this kind of stuff that was out there. And this is just all concepts. And I have to say that my best teachers are the women, the my lovers I was with. And so my best teacher is sitting next to me, not you. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I think you can say much more. So than now that. we can pass it to you, the best teacher in the, in the place. <laughs> um, wow. <laughs> uh, so tantric lovemaking. Um, the key for me is about letting go of the goal. Mm -hmm. and, and that opens up the possibility for an exploration <coughs> of pleasure, of presence, mm -hmm. um, being present in my body, being present with my partner, mm -hmm. and being able to go on this journey of exploration together. Yeah. And to follow the pleasure, to follow the sensations, the impulses coming from the body. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, it takes time. Mm -hmm. and, and we have to let go of all of these things we think sex is about. Yeah. And so sex is, is, it can be about procreation, it can be about recreation, it can be rejuvenation, and it can be transformation. Mm -hmm. And so the realm that we choose to play in is this realm of transformation, mm -hmm. where it becomes this, this journey into oneness. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's Beautiful. the most magical, yeah. transformative experience of coming together in this union. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's a specific saying in there that in the realms of Tantra, it's a man's thing or it's a guy's thing actually to master that. This, what I would call the ejaculatory choice and kind of to break that in a minute down in, a, in, the, in the neurophysiology of the body is that when when, when I, as the man in the sexual encounter, can relax on this orgasmic choice and not to choose to step over and going for the goal when I can relax there, and there's something really special about the penis touching the cervix. And when that is happening, uh, there's a connection in the woman's cervix related to the vagus nerve. And this is like a one-way autobahn directly into the brain, okay. into the pineal gland, where all this neurotransmitter, mm -hmm. all this, all this, this oxytocin mm -hmm. and and melatonin and endorphins, literally creating in the pineal gland the the release of DMT, dimethyltryptamine, what is giving the spiritual experience more in a woman's body, where we men, the lucky guys, to serving in that field if we are if we are present enough to stay there and not going like jumping in Gardens Eden and picking a flower and running away, but really intentionally, consciously staying there and serving into the in, into this energy field that the woman's body is opening up to. And and, and this is where, the, where the, the miracle, the mysticism of Tantra really starts to opening up. And this is why I would say it's, it's, a, it's a domain that is, that, that women need to teach. Okay, yeah. Cool. So, um, what do you think is the biggest challenge in that for, for men and for a woman? 
so maybe they have different challenges so mm -hmm. maybe for a man like this uh, delaying or even giving up ejaculation as I understand is a yeah it's so, a so part of it yeah I've, I've been working with men over the last 10 years quite a lot and uh, and not only from a book as well from my own experience and the main thing where in Western society most men are confronted with is the the conditioning indoctrination through pornography and, yeah. and there there has been a study um, that um, they wanted to find out the influence on a man's brain um, through pornography and they couldn't find men between 30 and 40 who has not watched porn so so it's it's a kind of a sad thing and the and the the imprint and the input specifically through pornography on the brain and on the limbic system and on the reward system and the release of dopamine is so massive that men literally program themselves through the visual stimulants of pornography to bypass the oxytocin connection sensual related feeling and touch so the connection base and and um and this needs in most man's nervous system and brain a reset that sometimes takes six to six months or three to six months. And most men going through a period of erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation through that. And, oh. and this is something where men kind of have to wake up from like from a dream. And this is this is a, is a challenge mostly for men. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can imagine. And on the other hand also, this idea in general to not ejaculate or, or not, not ejaculate so much or something. Some men just don't like it, right? They would just say, but I like my ejaculation. It's the most, it's the best part of sex. Mm -hmm. This is why I'm doing the, it's, the it's, whole thing. So what would you say to them? It's, you know, in, in, in French it calls le petit noir, the little mm -hmm. death. The three seconds of the hype when you just go into this peak experience of ejaculation yeah. and orgasm. But by mastering the orgasmic edge or the tantric arts, it's like finding this little spark just before you just actually explode, being capable of relaxing there and expanding the three seconds of Le Petit Moi into as long as you choose, if you want to stay there for 15 minutes or half an hour or an hour and just be serving in an orgasmic wave and, and this is just like, I, I would not give that away for three seconds ever again it sounds better than three seconds yeah. Yeah. yeah how about you as a woman so how would you say how does it compare for you tantric love making mm -hmm. and non-tantric yeah i think the biggest lessons for me have been around slowing down mm -hmm. and letting go of, of the expectation mm -hmm. of what i think i'm supposed to be doing mm -hmm. or what's supposed to be happening yeah and letting go of or, or redefining orgasm. Yeah. And so just like ejaculation for men, mm -hmm. women can also have a peak orgasm. Mm -hmm. And and that's typically the clitoral um, peak where yeah. there's a contraction and then this three second <coughs> bliss and then it's yeah. over and it's done. And so by, by letting go of that peak contractive orgasm and coming into a space of expansiveness, you actually become the orgasm. Become the orgasm. You become the orgasm. This so is where it becomes good. really fun. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. enter into an orgasmic state. I mean, it's a state of expansion. Mm -hmm. And in that place, there is just intense pleasure. And you find that that you can you can be in this space for as long as you desire, if you if you have. A, a partner who can stay there with you mm -hmm. so be, it becomes this team effort mm -hmm. that you're you're feeling the sensations in your own body and you're following your own pleasure but you're also tracking with each other to make mm -hmm. sure that you're you're together in this space mm -hmm. so that one is not running off and following their own pleasure and leaving the other one behind mm -hmm. um, it's it's building together and and so for most People, the, I think the average length of time for intercourse is seven minutes, mm -hmm. seven and a half minutes. Yeah, something like this. Yeah. And it, it takes time until women, ejaculation. yeah, mm -hmm. and on average it takes women 30 minutes to become fully engorged. Mm -hmm. So think about that. <laughs> think about yeah. that. Yeah. So the woman is just kind of getting started yes. and, um, and the man over. is already finished yeah. and it's kind of 
frustrating for the woman and mm -hmm. also for the man because the man yeah. also wants yeah. the woman to be happy and mm -hmm. it's also a pretty short experience, right? So yeah. Yeah. So yeah. changing how we approach sex, mm -hmm. what sex means, and giving it the time and the space where our bodies, both men and women, can come into our full erotic potential. Mm -hmm. And from that place, then we can we can play infinitely. Yeah, sounds amazing, I would say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if someone wants to start on this path, what would you recommend? Or you can also say, if you are offering workshops on this, or, or what else would you would you recommend to them? Mm. To say, just start by slowing down. Yeah, so, so of course we're offering workshops. So mm -hmm. we're having a web page that calls liberated.love. Mm -hmm. where we're offering for couples retreats, so one week retreats. Our next one is in uh, in summer in Bulgaria. Yeah. Um, but we as well um, doing smaller things, uh, for example, the Wheel of Consent workshops, mm -hmm. where we having a specific modality that calls a lover's touch, where we um, introducing couples into the specific modality of the four dynamics of the Wheel of Consent. Mm -hmm. We both offering one-on-one -on -one sessions, and um, but where where I would just recommend people to start is um, really looking up the uh, work of Betty Martin and the Wheel mm -hmm. of Consent and um, activating their own capability of taking and what taking really means. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the we are also part of the School of Consent, and the website is schoolofconsent.org. And there are about seven hours of free video from Betty Martin on that yeah. page. Um, and that's a great place to start, yeah. to start exploring some of these topics. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I have as well some uh, other YouTube, YouTube channel, Matthias Rentek, where I have some videos about the nervous system function and mm -hmm. the wheel of consent yeah. and oxytocin and the, the, the DMT release and tantric lovemaking. And, so it's just some topics to just look your way through and just get mm -hmm. um, inspired and find your own questions and answers. Yeah. 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 And a super simple, easy first step is to just start slowing down during lovemaking mm -hmm. and see how much you're following the pleasure mm -hmm. and, and see if you can extend the amount of time, even if it's just a few minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. Mm -hmm. And, and push that goal off a little further and just see what you find. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, this was fascinating. Thank you so much. I think You're we can welcome. leave it at this. If you have, you have any no, yeah, you. last comments. Okay, so thank you so much for taking the time here in Bali. And um, yeah. Yeah. Hope to have all a great you. journey in life. Exactly. Mm. <laughs>